Ivan Yenko, you are working for Transparency International Moscow. We would like to ask you a few questions about corruption in Russia. Since 1999, Putin declared that a free market economy is one of his political goals. What do you think? Are state and politics in Russia nowadays less corrupt than 10 years ago? According to most of the surveys, corruption have increased during the last 10 years. Also, state participation in the economy have increased. It's obvious. And our government is keeping talk to talk about free economy. Like, for example, last time when it was a big hope for everybody when Medvedev, starting his presidency, announced that freedom is better than not having freedom. He also said that there would be a huge privatization of state-owned companies, that he would uh, stop creating new state corporations and transfer current state corporations to the market economy because they are actually expelled from the market economy. The state corporation like a nuclear, Rosatom or Olympic state corporation. But during his presidency he didn't manage to close those state corporations, they still exist and the new one appears. So those talks and the reality are quite different. Uh, which sectors of the economy affect, are affected most? Well, if we would be talking about petty corruption, which is what people see, ordinary people, so according to the, most of the service, the most corrupted sector is uh, police and uh, law enforcement agency in, in general. Then it would be healthcare and education and also registration, like registration land or registration of person. So both sectors are quite corrupt. If we are talking from a higher level, like where there is like, some grant corruption, then public procurement is obviously the most corrupted areas. It's actually hard to find a public procurement contract which will go without corruption. And then there is construction work. All, almost all construction work involves some corruption, whether it's licensing or even selling those flats to state or to state through some of the companies. It also usually involves corruption. And what do you think needs to be done to get rid of corruption in Russia? It's a hard question, which we keep repeating ourselves. And uh, right now, the issues are following. Well, first of all, we should defend whistleblowers. Because right now in Russia, there is no laws on whistleblowers. And otherwise, there is laws on defamation, which, are, which recently were brought back to cr criminal court. So eventually a person who talk about a bribe will quite usually, quite often will face more of a punishment than any help from the state. And some of these ca cases are really scary, like Magnitsky case, where he actually blew a whistle about grand corruption involving some high level officials. And he himself was taken to prison where he eventually died. And recently prosecution or oh, and investigative committee closed the case saying that he died totally illegal and everything was okay. So helping those people who who actually blow a whistle on corruption and then make those investigations. Because right now investigation touch on the middle level corrupt official and those on the high level keep safe. Even the Minister of Defense where huge corruption was unveiled the minister himself still considered to be maximum a witness and there is no charges brought against him even though there is quite quite a number of papers where his signature we can see his signature on them i'm not saying that he is obviously that is that he's obviously guilty but i'm sure that he should face the charges and in court prove whether he's guilty or not and he should answer to those questions. And right now, he's not answering any of those questions. Your organization, Transparency International Moscow, scandalizes cases of corruption in Russia. How are the effects or reactions? The official reaction is usually quite limited and quite... Well, prosecution office where we send quite a number of complaints sometimes supports them, but there is no harsh punishment for public officials. 
that they will face some administrative charges for being involved in conflict of interest cases. Uh, there is quite a big interest from mass media, so there is more about what mass media will write about those politicians and what the public will think, and this becomes right now the most effective weapon. But the state itself doesn't really follow those stories. Thank you very much for the interesting interview.